That was that was actually a nightmare. I I'm shocked that that was so difficult. Let's be honest. It's me that is the problem. So I've got an idea that could be fun. Final Fantasy VIII was my favorite turn-based RPG when I was a kid. And within that game, there is probably one of the best mini games ever. I'm talking, of course, about Triple Triad, which is a card game within Final Fantasy VIII. And I thought it'd be fun to try and recreate that. To give you some context, I suppose we should probably look at that card game so you guys understand what I'm gonna to try to recreate. Basically, it's just like a really simple mathematical card game. Uh, you'll see like each card has four numbers in the corner and they correspond to like uh, an amount that if you place your card down next to another's and it's greater than, it gets turned into like your card. And whoever has the most cards on the board at the end wins. And so that's just the entire game. It's really basic. This is what the Triple Triad board looks like. The player is blue and the enemy is red, or like a pink almost. We've got these uh, four numbers in the top left-hand corner. Okay, I've been debating all morning whether or not to do it in 3D or 2D. And I think I'm gonna do it in 3D because that just is more fun. So that's what I'm gonna try and do. I don't know if it'll turn out good. 2D is too easy. We, well, I guess we need a camera because it's 3D and it's actually gonna be orthographic, I think. And I want to make like a little bit of a placeholder-y kind of board so that I can sort of see where I need to place these things. You can see that looks pretty good. And now we need the card. Go with the mesh instance. So we can just have this be, can we make it a gradient? So it's like a light blue. I can't see chat. Hang on a second. I think, I don't know if there's chat. Is there, Oh, there is chat. Okay. We're back in action. Chat's alive. Okay. Well, I think we'll call that good enough. So now from the top that will look like this okay that's great and then we just need another and we need another texture on top of all of this this is more complicated than i was expecting but it kind of makes sense if you're going into the 3d you know um space you're going to need to layer it up okay so we've got the portrait we need a portrait i don't have anything to put in you use the use your youtube logo as a placeholder that's a good idea that's much better than drawing a stick man nice let's add a material to this standard material and for the albedo, uh, we'll use the texture for the placeholder there. And then we need to, uh, 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 um, transparency uh, alpha, right? Okay, cool. And now we've got a card. How cool is that? I guess it's gonna be labeled 3D. So that is essentially what the portrait looks like. Hit save on that. That looks pretty normal to me. Fits on the game board, okay? We've got our board. We've got our card. Now we need to interact with them, right? Can we do it with area 3D? Is it, or are we gonna have to raycast? What was I thinking? 3D, input event camera node. When the object receives an unhandled input event position in the location of its world space of the mouse pointer, let's give it a go. I guess what we need to think about is who's in control of what? So we've got all these cards out here. When you click with the mouse, who decides it's gonna be following the mouse? Like we obviously, we can't be able to pick up. Let's just work on like, moving it with the mouse when we press that button. But the question is, does the game decide that? Or does the card just need to know that it's been picked up? And we can let the game decide whether or not it's a valid placement later. I think that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, we'll see, we'll see how it works out. We'll let the card know that it's been touched. Oh and my. okay, let's see if it worked. <laughs> or not, it's gone. Where did it go? Nobody knows. Okay, so zero is up here. Oh look, it's the it's the card. <laughs> what does that mean for us? It means we need to translate it into the scale of the camera. I don't know, I don't actually have to, to think about that. I could just raycast. Get viewport.get camera 3D, project ray origin. Um, this needs to be get viewport.get mouse position, right? I think this is exactly what I was looking for, by the way. Like I don't need anything else. This is this is actually what I want. We got there in the end, guys. We got there. Oh my goodness. Look at that. So easy. <laughs> it's so easy. Not really, but... Now, we need to be able to see when we unselect the card, if it can be placed on the board, obviously. So that's the next step. So we can, we can grab the card. Um, number one, if it's not a valid play, put it back in the deck and like move it back to its original position. And if it is a valid play, 
put it on the game board. Those are the two things we need to check. We can create an area 3D and we can literally just place them in these quadrants and we can just check when the mouse is released if it's over a, a valid spot on the board, if there's anything in that slot, vice, all that kind of stuff. So we'll need a script on the board. I guess we could use the areas themselves to see if they're overlapping, but I feel like that would be prone to bugs, if that makes sense. Right, right now, let's just turn debug and visible collision shapes. Uh, so the issue that we're going to have is if we just dropped it here, it would be overlapping both and it doesn't know which one to go to. Array that fires on unselect, that would work too. Just in, have a ray cast. We'll just have to mask it properly. If we can mask it, then we should be good. Okay, on card unselected, we check for a card slot. If there is a card slot, then we place the card in that card slot and remove it from the deck disconnect the signal so we can't interact with it anymore. We also move it into the position of the card, but I think we'll do that in the slot. That'll be easier. I don't think that ray cast is working. I think it needs to be on layer five. Oh no. Frustrating. We don't hit nothing. Intersection, get world, direct space, intersect ray. Why is it empty though? Oh, does it not hit areas by default? I think that might be it. And I'm using areas. It, it's. It needs to be set up to do that. So um, create dot collide with areas true. So that's definitely what it was. There we go. Yeah, sweet. And now I can no longer select them. Now we just need to work out if it's a winner or not. And we need to do like AI behavior, right? We also need to like give these values to something that makes sense because the cards need to like have stats, right? Uh, is it a dictionary or is it an array? I think I'm gonna make it a dictionary um, and then we'll just go like top, bottom, left, right. I've, I'm not doing any commas. Do I even know how to code? They all have the same numbers, but like it's, it's settable. So we need some enemies. Shit, how do I do that? And basically what we'll do is if it gets turned red, then we're gonna set the background um, to a different material. I guess that's, I guess that works. We'll just change the material. They should all start, change to red when I press that. Spacebar. It works. I need to be able to play against myself to test this out, to make sure that it works. And now they're, they're red and these are blue and I can just grab these and place them everywhere, right? Okay, we've always got a playable game here. Shit, spicy at the end. Just wrap it all in if statements and uh, the rest will be fine. Okay. Uh, don't worry about it. Just forget you ever saw me do this. Do as I say, not as I do. So red starting turn. And now it's blue. And these guys can't start. And now I can place my card here. This is where I would place it. And we go back and forth um, until someone wins. And we also need to like work out if it needs to change, right? There's actually quite a lot to do. Still. So once the card's in the slot, like how do we know what's around it? We could just add areas to each of the cards. A matrix of the board would work fine. If you had a matrix, you could like um, flick that off to the game state and the game state would know or the board would know. And once it's been placed and check that. But yeah, we, we would need a, I don't know, this will be easier. But it wasn't. Visually, this is really easy to understand. And it's just like, I'm going to use areas because it's 3D. There's literally no reason for it to be 3D. So we're, we're being incredibly lazy with how we're figuring this out because we're just leveraging the, like the 3D, 3D-ness of it all. So you got the areas, right? You know, based on which one's detecting what side it's on. You don't need to actually check. So you can just do the scoring in the card or do we just check that it's uh, blue? And say if it's a red one, then you need to flip. It's a blue one. I don't care about you. Actually so see the printouts. Okay, mouse detection. Mouse detection area. Oh my God, okay. Do we need another area? Every single, the top, bottom, left, right, it detects itself basically. <laughs> okay, I've forgotten how areas work. <laughs> oh my God. Would ray casts work better here? These areas kind of suck ass. Change, change type. Okay, here we go, ray cast, last one. Why am I doing this? This is so stupid. I committed and that's what we decided to do. Get collider. 
returns the first object that the A interacts with. Yay! Nice and simple. I don't know why I decided to do it with areas to begin with. A object, object, object is null. That is not what we want. They're not colliding with each other. I don't understand why they're not detecting. And I guess it's got to do with their positioning. Is there anything else that would prevent them from like detecting each other? We've got the board and then we've got a bunch of areas. We've got the one above and the one below on this area. I don't know what's going on anymore. I can't actually like, I don't know. Uh, yeah, see now it's working. What the heck? It literally, that was literally the problem. The problem was that there was two areas on top of it. I spent way too much time on that. That's crazy, actually. Okay, we're back in action. We've detected the area. We are close now. Let's get it. Let's get it. Okay, so we can get that object. We can get its bottom number and test it against our top number. And then just like, hey, you, you, you lost, mate. You're done with the flip the flip the thing. I should never have done this in 3D. This is actually ridiculous. They don't always collide. So this one's not colliding with that. And I just like, I one of these is like right, fucked up. And bottom area, it's the one on the left, right? Okay, so now we're we're getting errors. Oh, it's colliding with those ones over there. We're gonna have to turn them off when they're. Oh man, I got so many. <laughs> I got so many bugs. Oh my God. What are we doing? This is what happens when I try to do a marathon. I'm not a marathon runner. I am a sprinter, I guess. I don't know. I don't know how to put it. My brain don't work this way. All right, uh, this this like area, just, just shave a bit off it. Oh, hey, it worked. Wait, why is it working all of a sudden? Oh, look at that, yeah. There's like a ma massive bug there. That's probably why it wasn't working. Gee, I wonder. Red, okay, it's Red's turn. Uh, I can I can flip this, right? Um, I got a six here, and it's Red. Blue's turn. This, this is just like the most OP card I've ever seen. Uh, and then we flip it. Okay, okay, we're playing now. It's working. Holy shit. Um, flip this. That didn't work. Okay. There's some logic errors there. So maybe I need to... Okay, you know what I need to call in this? Right before we do this, we need to like call like force update. I think it's called update. I've... To be honest, I'll be honest with you guys. Like, I don't think I've made a game with so many bugs before. Probably because I've been trying to do something unconventional. Okay, so let's try to flip this. Um, this'll do. That didn't work. Is it because it's inside it? Hit from inside? Is that, is that might be like, maybe they're too close together? Okay. Maybe that was the answer. The answer is they were too close together. The Raycast was inside it. Is that really what the answer is? So, now we just need a score. That's it, and then we're done. That's like technically the game. There's no AI, but like that's pretty much what it is. Okay, we got one on the board for him. Okay, and now I can flip it and it becomes two. This is, I think, how the game is supposed to work. Give me something that I can flip with. And now it's two, one. And then we flip back. And it's three, one. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Okay, so the score is correct. I think we're good. I think that's correct. To finish it off, I will play the game to the soundtrack of the Triple Triad. <laughs> okay. It's still really loud, but whatever. Um. I don't think I have anything. Do I have anything? Seven, eight. I think 
I just, I'm, I don't have any good placements. They're both weak. Uh, yeah, I think we just cooked, mate. Uh, blue wins. We did it. We did it. That was, that was actually a nightmare. I, I'm shocked that that was so difficult probably because i was trying to do it in a way that's not supposed to let's be honest it's me that is the problem <laughs> you know what i'm saying i guess i i should have done it in 2d hindsight like 2d that was it was like a bad choice to do it in 3d because like all i wanted was like the 3d flip because in the game the cards like flip over when you win them and 2d would have been way easier like a million times easier because all that placement stuff like it just would have been like five seconds you know it just wouldn't have been something i had to worry about maybe z ordering i don't know like y sorting you know that weird stuff that you have to deal with in 2d but like other than that like you know did not need to do this in 3d that was just like an an extra layer of difficulty that was not worth it but other than that guys it has been real like subscribe all that good stuff we made it through we made it there we go hey look at all these people so many now